production part approval process. I see it is nowhere covered in the engineering syllabus. But without this, not even a single part can be bought inside an automotive or an aerospace industry for production. See the importance. This is a standard global process developed and standardized by Automotive Industry Action Group. Let's discuss more about the scope, career opportunities and importance of PPAP. Welcome to another video. Parts produced from a process which is not capable, an incapable process. Will it constantly meet the specification and quality? No. The process is important. It might result in line stoppages, field failures and delayed projects. PPAP is a set of documents for every single part, only after approval of which the part can be shipped from the supplier to the customer. Who will approve these documents or who will approve the PPAP? A quality engineer. But quality engineer cannot be generalized. There can be many quality engineers in an industry. Incoming inspection quality engineer, process quality engineer, production quality engineer, final inspection quality engineer, supplier quality engineer. Yes, supplier quality engineer. These procedures are applicable for process and products which is bought from the supplier. So the supplier quality engineer is responsible for approving the PPAP. After the approval, he says that there won't be any future quality issues for this part. And if any quality issues comes in the future, he is responsible to solve it. When a PPAP is required. 1. A new part or a new product introduction. Correction of discrepancies in the previously approved part. If there is any design changes, whether it is a customer initiated design change or supplier requested design change. Any change in the manufacturing process or the materials. Any change in the production line from one line to other production line. If there is any change in the supplier locations. The supplier wants to shift the manufacturing location from one location to other location. Or if there is any supplier change itself. In all of these events, a new PPAP is required. So what PPAP does? It ensures the design records and specifications are properly understood by the supplier. And supplier's manufacturing facility has the potential to produce these parts in reliable and repeatable manner. Constantly meeting these requirements. Not just once, constantly. Let's come towards the documentations of PPAP. The first document is design record itself. The supplier should have the latest design records with all the drawings and the dimensions identified. The drawing should be comparable with the part produced. The details of all the tests to be done on the part. The specifications of the material and any other design related documents. Engineering change notification. This document should contain all the description of all the design changes happened on the part. Customer engineering approval. Usually, an engineering trial with production part is done or performed at the customer location and approval is required for the same. Design FME, Design Failure Mode Effect Analysis I have already done videos on FME, which is nothing but predicting a failure before it occurs and taking measures to avoid the same. Please refer to the video on FME. This is required specially if the part is a supplier design part and not required for a part which is customer design part. Process loop. A detailed process flow diagram is required. For example, how the part flows. Maybe first the incoming inspection and it goes to the first station for the first operation. It goes to second station for second operation and until the final packaging. The complete process flow is required in the diagram format. Process FMEA. The concept of FMEA is same but this is applied for the process, for the manufacturing process. For all the process identified during the process flow diagram, there should be an FMEA applied. Control plan. This is another document which says that there should be a control over each key process identified during the process FME. This should be in line with the process FME. Just for example, if there is any critical dimensions of 12mm to be followed, there should be a measure in place to ensure that we follow the 12mm. We control the 12mm. Dimensional results. When you see drawing, you see a lot of dimensions in the drawing. So there should be a document to provide the list of all the dimensions and what are the tolerances considered and what is achieved. Materials and performance test results. This is nothing but the summary of all the tests performed on the part. The requirement of the test will be provided from the engineering. Both the chemical properties test and physical properties test, whichever is mentioned by the engineering in the engineering desired records. Process studies. PPAP is not only for the product, it is also for the process. There is a method to validate the process by which the part is being manufactured. It is called as statistical process control. This will ensure the performance of the process 
whether this process will perform good in the future or not. Appearance approval report. Not mandatory for all the parts, but for those parts where the appearance is important. Not for something which is going inside an engine, but something which is visible from outside. Sample production parts. There should be production samples submitted during the PPAP. And these parts will be validated by supply quality engineers. Master sample. Master sample is an approved sample, like an example part, which is retained at the supplier. This is to compare with the production part for future use, with defined intervals. To ensure that all the production parts are as per this. Checking aids. Checking aids is a document to ensure that all the tooling considered are as per the dimensions provided. Customer specific requirements. We are talking about a lot of documents. And apart from all these, if customer is demanding anything specific to them, those documents also should be provided as a part of PPAP. PSW. PSW is a very important document which is a part submission warrant. This is nothing but the summary of all the PPAP conducted. How many documents were collected, who has done the PPAP, which is the part, who is the supplier, what level of PPAP is done, what level of approval is given, the reason for PPAP. PPAP has five levels of submission or five different kinds of submission. The levels of submission is based on the complexity of the part and the ability of the supplier. The level one says only the part submission warrant is required, no other documents are required. Maybe it's a very simple part and supplier can manage it themselves. Level 2 is part submission warrant, product samples and limited supporting documents. What are limited supporting documents? Something which is mandatory like a drawing and design record, the dimension results and the materials and performance test results. Level 3 says part submission warrant, the product samples and all the supporting documents to be submitted to the customer. Level 4 says part submission warrant, product samples and all other uh, documents can be retained to the supplier which should be made available to the customer upon request. Level 5 says the PSW product samples and all the supporting documents should be retained at the supplier location and whenever it is asked by the customer they should be made available at the supplier location. What is covered is just the basics of PPAP. Please read more and more about PPAP if you are looking for a job in automotive industry. And please comment below if you feel that this is already included in your engineering syllabus or if you feel that this should be included in your engineering syllabus. Any knowledge you gain here will never go on waste. Thank you.